Now it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce to you Dr. Richard Pazder. But of course, he needs no introduction. Everybody knows who he is. And most of all, we're all extremely grateful for his service, for his science, for his leadership, for his innovation, and mostly for what he does for patients every single day. It is a great honor to introduce Dr. Pastor. And thank you, Ellen, for your leadership uh, in uh, oncology, and welcome to White Oak, uh, the FDA headquarters. I want to start a little bit with COVID and what this has done to our country, what it has done to our nation, what it has meant to all patients, and particularly cancer. Our cancer patients are highly vulnerable, and they want to make sure that they're not left out of this equation because they are being hit very badly. And perhaps you can talk to us a little bit about what you're doing and what's happening in cancer and specifically cancer and COVID. Well, you know, we recognized very early that it was important for us to be there for the cancer patients, the um, group of medical oncologists and all the people that work in oncology at the FDA. Uh, and these include many people, including medical oncologists, pediatric oncologists, radiation oncologists, surgical oncologists, our basic science people. Uh, we all were committed to being there for the cancer patient. Uh, this is a very difficult time for everybody in the United States uh, in every aspect of our lives. Uh, and so we really wanted to make a concerted effort to make sure that patients with cancer do not feel forgotten in this pandemic. And I think that is an important concept that I would like to really emphasize to you. Uh, during this period of time, when we left uh, in mid-March, uh, uh, when the COVID uh, pandemic blossomed, so to speak, uh, we had really a series of listening sessions with the oncology community. And these included professional groups, patient groups, individual groups, uh, individual patients, rather. And one of the resounding um, comments that were made, especially by the patients, is that they felt forgotten. Everything was about COVID, 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 rightly so. So what we really decided to do is really marshal our forces in oncology. Uh, and so we did not miss a beat here. Uh, we, I think, put out something over uh, 12 to 15 guidances during this period of time. We approved 33 new indications, many new molecular entities. Well, we are very grateful to you, and cancer patients are incredibly grateful, and all patients. So thank you. The patient has always been your North, uh, North Star. Well, Ellen, you know, one of the things that I looked at uh, is, as you know, my wife underwent cancer treatment and obviously succumbed from her disease uh, five years ago. And I couldn't imagine going through that whole journey with her during this period of time with all the disruption uh, for uh, that the, can the patient with cancer would face, okay? So I fully understand from a personal level really the impact that this pandemic had on patients uh, that were being treated for cancer. I wanna shift a little bit uh, to some of the pilots and some of the programs that you have been really leading like uh, our tour, real-time oncology review, and Project Orbis. Those are pilots. Uh, can you tell us where they're going? And if you are looking at other pilots, because we know that you always like to innovate, it would be interesting to hear more about that. Well, we have many programs that are ongoing in uh, the Oncology Center of Excellence. Uh, the RTOR program, the real-time oncology review program, was basically a program that we set up to really jumpstart the review process. So while the pharmaceutical companies are preparing their reports for official FDA submission, uh, they are submitting that data to us. We begin our review of that data. Uh, and I think that this is, is, is a really invaluable uh, project, especially for breakthrough therapy products, where there is an interest in really to avail these drugs as soon as possible to the American public because they have a major impact uh, on their health and 
on the treatment of this disease. Uh, this is coupled by uh, another project uh, that we have called an assessment aid where we work with the pharmaceutical sponsor to reduce the redundancy of reports, et cetera. Uh, we really want our reviewers to concentrate really on the intellectual aspect, what's going on, what their comments are, their critical reviews, rather than simply writing report after report after report. Mm -hmm. A little bit about Project Orbis. Yeah, Project Orbis was a, a offshoot of an international program that we had developed. The submission of these applications went uh, to all of the members of the of the Project Orbis countries uh, that would like to participate in the review of these applications, and this would become a collaborative, not a joint review, but a collaborative review. Now this has grown tremendously. It started out uh, basically with Canada, Australia, uh, and uh, Switzerland, and then it went to Singapore, uh, and uh, hopefully in January the UK will join us. Uh, and there's discussion also on the way with uh, having uh, Brazil uh, as well as Israel join the project. So it's really, really gained a lot of momentum, and I think that uh, this perhaps is one of the things that I feel most proud of because it really has allowed important medications to be uh, really accessed on a global basis. Uh, many times people look at government as just kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again as if we were just filling out forms in the Social Security office or something like this, but really this is a much different job uh, and I really challenge the reviewers, our, our medical oncologists, pediatric oncologists, our basic sciences, our statisticians that work for with us really, uh, to look at the system and see how we can improve it. Because that's really, I feel, the fun of the job, really taking a process and really transforming it. Well, you know how to execute and lead. Uh, so today's conference, um, Friends of Cancer Research, is on Beyond Breakthrough, expedited reviews, and we're looking at these programs. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Rick, and what you're thinking about that? Yeah. Beyond uh, Breakthrough. I, I've been very impressed that, you know, throughout the years, we have developed many of these expedited programs, and they range from uh, Fast Track to RMAT to, uh, to priority reviews to uh, Oh, uh, breakthrough therapies. And I, I really, really challenge people to, to kind of take a look at all of these programs and how we could actually simplify them. Uh, we spend a lot of time at the FDA designating all of these different programs and what drugs should go into them. And to be honest, there's a lot of overlap that exists. And I, I think one of the important things that has come out of really this discussion is really to critically look at what goes on after we make these designations. It's not so much the designation, it's what occurs afterwards. And that's one of the new projects that we have called Beyond Breakthrough, and we've discussed this with Friends of Cancer Research, really to assist us in looking at the various parts of breakthrough therapy, the various disciplines that are involved, both with the uh, with the pharmaceutical industry and their counterparts then uh, in the FDA to look at what are the pain points uh, and what are potential ways of improving the process here. The designation means nothing unless one actually executes it. And we have this broad generalization that it's an all hands on deck. Well, that's very broad, but let's get into some granularity. What are the specific types of meetings that one needs? What are the uh, major questions that perhaps need to be answered earlier? Some of these questions include the following. Um, I don't think we've done a really good job in dosing of oncology drugs. Uh, most of our information is derived from the area of cytotoxic therapies where we looked at maximum tolerated dose. Uh, we don't do a lot of dose studies looking at varying doses of drugs, and perhaps we need to take a closer look at that rather than just going with a dose of a drug uh, in a single arm study. Uh, the other thing that we have to look at is 
many of the applications in oncology, especially as we move into different subsets of diseases, okay, and the subsetting, subsetting and clustering or the categorization of smaller and smaller patient groups, uh, those trials are going to be smaller. They're probably going to be single arm trials because randomized trials will not be able to be done just because of the patient numbers. Uh, and that has some issues about how we review drugs. And I'm not talking about the clinical portion of it, but I'm talking about the manufacturing of the drugs. Uh, when we have an application that has 50 patients in it, well, that may not take a long time for a clinical review. However, the same expertise for the manufacturing of the drug has to be done whether it has 50 patients, 500 or 5,000, so to speak. So we really need to work and make sure that as we move forward with breakthrough therapy, that we have everybody on the same page and they're moving in the same direction. So now I want to shift a little bit to the formulation of OCE, the Oncology Office of Excellence, Center of Excellence. And uh, for Friends of Cancer Research and the entire community, we have worked very, very, very hard of consolidation of cancer and integration, knowing the complexity of the disease. Um, is it working as envisioned, you know, or is it still a work in progress? Well, it depends on whose vision you say uh, and what to uh, contemplate. I, I think the way the uh, OCE was envisioned uh, really has not been fully implemented. Okay, there have been many issues since uh, four years ago when the OCE was formulated. Obviously, it came from the moonshot program of uh, President-elect Joe Biden. Uh, and there are many issues here that have occurred over the past four years. Obviously, there was a change in administration uh, shortly after the uh, initiation of the OCE. There have been multiple commissioners here at the FDA, and then the pandemic also took the spotlight away from cancer to obviously the pandemic, and here again, rightly so, because obviously this was a national problem that needed to be addressed. So there were many intervening forces here during these last four years, and I would hope that with a new administration coming, that we would see a renewed interest in really reevaluating what the role of the OCE should be and how it should be set up. So it's fair to say the OCE is a work in progress. Stay tuned. Uh, now I want to switch to something personal for all of us. Um, everyone knows the loss of cancer is personal to me. It's personal to you. It's certainly. Uh, personal to Vice President-elect uh, Joe Biden and to everyone, millions and millions of people. And uh, what are we not doing? What do we need to do? What is the big picture vision? Because we all care about making progress and we're making substantial progress, but we still have a fair amount to go. Talk a little bit about well, that. I, I think that vision. we, collaboration, cooperation, um, leadership needs to be there, okay? Uh, we don't have that to its fullest extent at this time. We have to be realistic that the major impetus of developing many of these drugs, at least the clinical trials that we see, are coming from the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and that's just a fact. Uh, and are these companies working together as effectively as possible? Uh, and I, I think that that really deserves some discussion. Uh, obviously, France has been instrumental in bringing the stakeholders together. I think there's more of a need really to look at putting aside perhaps some of the competitive issues and working in a more collaborative space here. And that is with regards to many of the classes of drugs that we see in oncology. I cannot thank you enough for your dedication, for what you have done, for your intellect, for your passion. I know it's personal, but the impact has been profound. Just continue doing what you're doing and stay really healthy. Thank you well, so thank much. Well, thank you, Ellen, for this opportunity to talk to you. Thank you for your support throughout the years. 
uh, for the OCE, for oncology, and most importantly for the oncology patients.